down 31 points yet. Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. It is 8.08, hour number three of Jersey Central on the new Talk Radio WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey. Contest coming up in this half hour of the show. One note, name that tune for your chance to win the tickets to see the uh, John Lennon show. Lennon through a glass onion at the Union Square Theater in New York. It's uh, storytelling and music. We'll give you the chance to win the uh, tickets for that with one note, name that tune. And we're also going to include a bonus prize for today's winner. We're going to throw in a copy of the book, The Jersey Shore Thrill Killer, which is written by author John E. O'Rourke, uh, who joins me now on the Raritan Bay Medical Center Jersey Newsmaker Hotline to talk about the book and the uh, fascinating story that it covers. Uh, welcome, uh, John. Welcome to WCTC. Great to have you here with, uh, with us this morning. Well, hi, Bert, and uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Born in Pequannock, raised in uh, Wanakew, and a 26-year uh, uh, member of the New Jersey State Police, the finest uh, law enforcement uh, organization in all the land. And uh, you bring a lot of experience uh, to, to your work here, and uh, I'm really fascinated about this story. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey. I was a little kid uh, in the early 1970s, and I have no recollection of this. I was kind of too young to appreciate what was going on. But talk about what the, uh, what the atmosphere and what, what was the feel like uh, in Asbury Park while uh, all these, these killings were going on. Well, Asbury Park was a, uh, at, at that time, the middle to uh, early 80s, was a time of high crime and uh, illicit activity uh, all along the boardwalk. Even though the Jersey Sound was starting to uh, arise from there, Springsteen started to become popular, uh, there was a series of uh, crimes and missing people that uh, slowly began to occur in the area, and it lasted a number of years between uh, Staten Island and the Jersey Shore area where Richie Biggenwald was uh, transitioning be between both locations. So uh, it was probably a pretty scary time, you know, one of these things, uh, you know, uh, don't be out at night or don't go out by yourself, uh, almost like a Son of Sam kind of feel in Asbury Park? Absolutely. All the, uh, what once was the, the, the big attractions to Asbury Park started to close up and the, the abandoned buildings started to attract uh, a variety of people from the homeless to uh, drug dealers, uh, prostitution, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you, had, uh, you had a series of activity that was going on around there, which uh, kind of created the atmosphere for a man like Richard Biggenwald to opt. Uh, operate without even being uh, spotted. Man, this is, sounds like a pretty scary time, and you, you do a, a great job of kind of capturing the, the feel of what was going on there in the book. Again, it's called uh, The Jersey Shore Thrill Killer. Uh, as a member of the state police uh, at the time, uh, John, did you have involvement in this case? Uh, was the state police called in to, to assist the uh, local authorities at the time? Well, this occurred just, I, I came on in 85. Okay. This occurred just, just prior to that. There was some state police involvement in it, uh, because there was a lot of cold cases that, that they were trying to wrap up, and he was suspected in a number of them. But because of the way he operated, and he didn't share much information with people, a lot of those that, those cases uh, just went, uh, you know, um, by the wayside. Yeah. So cold cases today. Talk about uh, Richard Biegenwald, if you would. Uh, take us inside the mind of a serial killer. Is that kind of detailed in the book as well? It is. It is. Uh, and I, I try to uh, give a perspective on that it just he, didn't, he just wasn't born a serial killer. There were a number of, uh, of things that occurred that created uh, this this monster, if you, if you will. Uh, he was a problem child, uh, without a doubt. He started showing um, uh, problematic behavior from an early age. At the age of five, where his mo mother had him evaluated, uh, he was early on uh, diagnosed as a uh, having schizophrenia. Although I, I I don't really think that was his, his problem. He uh, had antisocial uh, disorder problems. He was in and out of uh, mental institutions from the age of five all the way to the age of 16. He went, he went to the Children's Psychiatric Hospital in Rockland County for an, a number of years uh, where he received electro um, shock therapy, which is where they, they uh, hook up these electrodes to you and, and shock you. That was believed, uh, and it's still uh, conducted today, that type of therapy. It's, believed to kind of reduce stress. He uh, received a number of those. Uh, he told his attorney that in order to keep himself uh, warm, because they would wrap him in cold sheets, he'd have to uh, urinate on himself to keep himself warm. So he was a, um, had a series of issues. And he ultimately ended up in the um, Boys Academy up in Woodward, uh, New York, uh, the, uh, the state school for boys there, which... Um, he, at first, he was problematic, 
to actually try to uh, escape from there. But some, something happened where he was able to uh, get himself under control, and he was ultimately released by the age of 16. And I just, he was a very, very smart man. Uh, had an extremely high um, IQ. And I believe that what he realized is he needed to um, act accordingly in order to get back uh, on the streets. And ultimately, when he got caught, that's exactly when he had killed his, his first uh, murder was when he was 18 years old. Uh, was sentenced to life in prison, and ultimately you see in prison that transition when he first gets there, his, his behavior is, um, is horrendous. When he gets to the point where he's going to become eligible for parole, he all, all of a sudden starts to, to become the model prisoner wow. in, Talk hopes, in hopes of getting out. Talk about his victims, if you could, John. Were these random murders, or did they all have some sort of commonality, the uh, victims of uh, Richard Beganwald? Well, his thrill killings, which are the ones where he killed the young women, they all looked alike. They they were uh, teenagers. Um, they had dark hair. Uh, they were brunette, uh, dark uh, dark skin, dark eyes. He liked he liked that that look. And those were his throat killings. And there were a number of them. There were there were four young uh, women that he uh, in the early eighties. And sadly, all we know is. And the only reason we, we, we were able to get Richard Beaglewald is because a witness came forward, his, his girlfriend, who ironically looks very similar to, to his drill kill victims. Uh, and she came forward and, and um, you know, uh, with the Anna Oxford case, she was, uh, it was a cold case that uh, started in Ocean County where her body was found by uh, a Burger King restaurant in an abandoned uh, lot. Hmm. So well, if, it, if not for her coming forward, we you know we might not even know who Richard Beaglewald is. Wow! So it was kind of uh, a tip, uh, the break that you were waiting for, and in, uh, in conjunction with some good old-fashioned police work uh, that led to his capture, huh? Absolutely. After yeah. she came forward, then it was the domino effect with with the investigators. And then uh, other people started to come forward as well. Well, the book is an absolute must-read if you want to uh, take a look back at a uh, pretty interesting and kind of scary time in, the, in Jersey's history. It is called The Jersey Shore Thrill Killer and uh, written by John E. O'Rourke, a former New Jersey state police officer, and uh, does a great job of telling the story. John, where does someone uh, purchase a copy of the book? It's available uh, in all Barnes & Noble stores in New Jersey. It's also available uh, online at Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com and uh, some small uh, book uh, retailers. All right. Um, Great. Well, wonderful to have you with us this morning. Uh, thank you so much for your, for your years of service with the New Jersey State Police. Uh, that's much appreciated. And uh, good luck with this book. It looks like a really great read. And uh, thank you so much for your time today, okay? Uh, thank you, Bert. Appreciate it. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. John E. O'Rourke, a former New Jersey State Police officer and uh, now an author, The Jersey Shore Thrill Killer. And uh, we're going to give you a chance to win a copy of the book as a bonus prize. And we're going to do our contest coming up uh, in just a few moments. And by the way, uh, John E. O'Rourke joining me on the Raritan Bay Medical Center Jersey Newsmaker Hotline. Raritan Bay Medical Center, the home of 3D mammography, 40% more accurate than traditional mammography, reducing the number of callbacks for further testing. Jersey Central traffic and weather time, 816. Traffic and weather every 10 minutes.